When it comes to midsize electric SUVs, it's pretty hard to beat the entire package of a Tesla Model Y. In fact, that segment has grown so tremendously over the years that every single manufacturer wants to get in on the fun with their version of a Tesla Model Y. Now, today we're actually out here in Irvine, California, just outside of LA to drive the very newest entry, which actually comes from an all new brand. This right here is the 2024 VinFast VF8. Now, if you guys have never heard of VinFast before, that's because they are a new brand that is from Vietnam and they are coming to the States with the right vehicle because this is a mid-size fully electric SUV that delivers up to 263 miles of range and starts at around $46,000. So if you guys are looking for a vehicle in this space and you want to drive something that's a little bit different versus what your neighbor drives, how does the brand new 2024 VinFast VF8 stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we talk about the exterior styling of this new VinFast VF8, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys underneath the hood because that's always the million dollar question with a lot of EVs. Does this vehicle have a frunk? And I'm happy to report that when you lift up the hood, it does, although it is a little bit of a small, slightly weirdly shaped frunk. Now underneath this hood, you're gonna find a pretty decent amount of storage space. You can see there's actually some access panels here where you can access the 12 volt battery pack. You can also access the fuse box and it also gives you a little bit of additional storage here, although it's a little bit shallow. And again, it is a strange shape. But while we're, while we're underneath here, let's go ahead and talk about what's powering this thing. Now all VF8s are gonna come to America here with dual motor all wheel drive, which means you have an electric motor on the front and on the rear axle, giving this vehicle all wheel drive. They are powered by an 87.7 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now that battery pack is actually new because the early editions of this car when they first showed up in the early part of 2023 had an 82 kilowatt hour pack from SDI battery. This now has the, a, an 87 kilowatt hour battery pack from CATL. So it's a different battery pack. This model that I'm showing you here is the plus trim, which means it offers 402 horsepower and 457 pound feet of torque. If you guys go to the eco trim, which is the model that'll get up to 263 miles of range, that offers a little bit less power at 349 horsepower, but 400 102 is actually more power versus what you're going to get in the Tesla Model Y dual motor, a Mustang Mach-E, a Hyundai Ioniq 5, a Toyota BZ4X. Um, so this is actually a fairly good amount of power. It all goes out through a one-speed reduction gear transmission. Uh, VinFast says uh, you should get to 60 in around 5.5 seconds. It has a top speed of around 124 miles an hour. And this vehicle is an SUV. It can actually tow a fairly good amount, just under 4,000 pounds, around 3,900 pounds or so, which is a very, again, impressive amount of towing capability. Uh, and in terms of the efficiency, this model here, because it's the plus version with 20 inch wheels, does drop the range to around 243 miles. That is a big improvement versus the early cars, which only offered around 191 miles for this model here, or 200 seven for the Eco. So again, Vidinfast has already improved the range significantly and that range number puts it right in line with a lot of its competitors. Now the curb weight used to be where the VF8 was significantly heavier than its competitors, especially with the SDI battery pack. Sadly, I couldn't find the curb weight figures of the new model with the CATL pack. The old model was around 5,700 pounds. So I'm gonna estimate that this new model should be a little bit lighter versus the old version. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling of this vehicle. Now, this particular one that I'm showing you here is a 2024 model. It's fresh off of the factory showroom floor. These are built in Vietnam for now, although VinFast is working on building an actual facility, a production facility in North Carolina that should be completed by 2025 or 2026. This color that I'm showing you is called Deep Ocean. It's $950 extra. You can see there's a lot of beautiful metallic fleck in this green. Deep Ocean is kind of a funny name because it makes me think that this is a blue car, but as you can see, it's a dark green car. You can see the front fascia has a lot of styling details here that make it look pretty attractive, but also slightly um, interesting looking as well. You can see the front end has kind of like an LED daytime running light that kind of creates almost like a V because as you guys know, VinFast, that's their logo logo, they wanted to kind of create a V in the actual design. The headlights, you can see these are full LEDs where you have an LED low and high beam, LED daytime running light, LED turn signals. This car, remember, was designed by Pininfarina, which is an Italian design company that also designs Ferraris. I don't see any hints of Ferrari in this vehicle, obviously, but you can see there are some functional and non-functional air vents. You can see 
Down here, there are also some active grill shutters, more air vents over here. There are also some LED fog lights down there, which is nice to see. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the design. I think this car looks pretty interesting. Uh, in this color, I think it's definitely a nice option if you guys are looking for something a little bit different. But moving around the side profile, you can see this is a midsize electric SUV, and it's about the same size as a Tesla Model Y at 187 inches long. It has a 116 inch long wheelbase. Um, this is, again, the same size as something like a Model Y or a Mach-E. There's also going to be a bigger VF9 that offers three rows. That's around 201 inches long. So if you need more space, just wait until next year. That car will be coming to America uh, around that time. You can see the wheels. This plus trim here has a 20 inch wheel wrapped in a 245 by 40 R20 tire. The brakes are also large. These are almost 15 inches in the front. Uh, I think they're around 13 inches in the rear. Ground clearance, I believe, is just under uh, seven and a half inches, which is fine. It's a conventional steel suspension, no adaptive dampers or air springs. Now, the charge port door is located over here. VinFast still is going to be using their J1772 plug with the CCS combo. They have not announced if they're gonna switch to the NAC plug. I imagine they'll be thinking about announcing something like that, something like that soon. This vehicle has the ability to accept up to 150 kilowatts of max DC fast charging, which means you can go from 10 to 70% in about 31 minutes, which is pretty average for the class. The door is also very conventional. It's not a power door. These mirrors are also power folding. You have integrated turn signals with a full 360 camera. There's some chrome along the window trim here. And then there's also a big panel glass sunroof, which actually opens up and also uh, lets you vent air in, which is nice. Some competitors just do a glass roof where you can't actually open it. You can see from this angle, the car looks a little bit more conventional for me. I almost think that, you know, it kind of has hints of like what an electric Ford Edge would look like. Um, the rear end, as you can see, it looks like it's kind of squatting down, but that's actually the way that the car sits. It does have some updates to the suspension tuning for this uh, 2024 that I'm showing you here because it got some software and some hardware tweaks. You can see looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see I much prefer the look of the front, but you can see VinFast is trying to kind of carry through the same design cue here where it kind of creates a V in the LED uh, tail light design. You have LED turn signals, LED reverse lights. You can see it spells out VinFast very boldly at the back with that V logo. And then VF8, again, shows the model. There's gonna be a smaller VF6, VF7, and then of course the larger uh, VF9 uh, as well. Now, underneath here, you can see there's uh, rear parking sensors, um, which again is going to be uh, great for those of you who plan to parallel park this thing in tight spaces. And then this plus trim that I'm showing you also has a foot activated power lift gate, which means if you have the key fob on you, you can kind of just swipe your foot underneath there and then it'll open up the cargo area for you. That's included on this plus trim. Highly recommend that feature if you guys are looking at this car. And then in terms of the cargo capacity, you can see back here, there's around 18 cubic feet of space, which actually isn't a lot by the numbers, but as you can see, it's a very usable amount of space. That's my 22 inch roller bag, my backpack. It fits on the in there pretty nicely. Underneath here, there's no spare tire. There's a little bit of storage, but some competitors offer even more deeper storage. If you want, you can fold down those second row seats and that expands the cargo capacity to around 49 cubic feet of space, which is usable, but it is a little bit less versus what you're gonna get from some of the competitors. So now let's move on to the interior of this all new VinFast VF8. Before we get inside, however, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see all VF8 models come with intelligent access key with push button start. You can see this key fob is a very interesting design. It feels really big, bulky, and heavy, but it also feels relatively well-made. You have your buttons here for panic. You can see there's an unlock lock. You can also power remote the trunk. Um, the vehicle does not come with a phone as a key function, but if you guys are an owner of this car, there is a VinFast app where you can actually ping the car and lock and unlock it from your smartphone. VinFast says they are working on adding a phone as a key function at a later time, which they may add eventually as an over the air update. Now you can see the vehicle is locked right now. The mirrors are folded in. Uh, the back of the door handle doesn't have an electronic or a sensor pad, so if you want to unlock it, you actually have to touch the button with the key fob on you. That'll unlock the door for you. That'll unfold the mirrors. You can see it's a conventional door handle. These aren't any kind of like electronic pull-out kind of door handles. It's just very much conventional, which I also uh, appreciate as well. Now, my tester, as you can see, has that deep ocean green exterior with a black interior. Now, these are the vegan leather seats you get with the Plus model. VinFast actually offers several different interior colors. You can also choose from this black, which is standard, that's free. There's also a dark blue interior, a brown interior, and like a beige white interior. All those interior colors are an extra 950 bucks but you can see the plus includes these uh, nicer vegan seats, which includes some contrasting stitching. 
interesting. These are also heated and ventilated and the seats move in 12 different ways, which also includes a four-way lumbar and you also have memory functions. That's included when you guys go for the plus trim. Overall, it makes a pretty nice first impression. The door panel, as you can see, has a soft touch injection molded plastic here. There's some nice real aluminum trim here with a aluminum accented door handle. It's nice and padded over here. The switch gear also feels pretty good. Uh, surprisingly high quality. It's one touch for all four, which is nice. And if you are looking at the switch gear here and it looks familiar, that's because it comes from BMW. Those are BMW window switches and you'll also see some BMW turn signal and windshield wiper stocks on the steering wheel, which is a kind of a nice surprise. Now getting inside, you can see uh, with a little under seven and a half inches of ground clearance, it has a pretty nice easy step in height as I get in and shut the door. The door has a relatively solid sounding thunk, so that kind of leads to an impression of quality. Now remember, this is a startup company, so I'm prepared to see lots of misaligned panels and some horrible creaks. And I have to say, I've been poking around this interior all day and I'm pleasantly surprised with what I'm finding. Now, first of all, uh, when you want to get it, when you get into the vehicle, there's no start stop button. So that just like a Tesla, I have the key fob on me, I'm sitting my butt in the seat, put my foot down, onto the brake and that's what turns the car on. I love how the speedo also goes all the way up to 300. That's really interesting, never seen that before. But again, the chime will go off. It'll say ready in the instrument cluster here. Uh, and that's how you know the car is ready to drive. Uh, this model here also being a plus trim, uh, as you can see, has a heads up display, but that's included actually on even the Eco. But you do get a nice little tilt and telescope, power tilt telescoping steering wheel, which is nice. And then the steering wheel itself, you can see, has a flat bottom design. Uh, it is electric power steering, obviously. Um, and you can see there's some buttons here for your uh, audio controls and for your cruise control switches, the horn. It actually sounds good. It doesn't sound puny or you know, pathetic like on some vehicles that I've tested in this class. But you can see here in terms of the dashboard materials, there's some soft touch uh, actual stitching here on this upper portion of the dash. This here is a hard touch plastic area. Down here, it's also hard touch plastic, although there is some nice aluminum trim. I am surprised, pleasantly surprised with the overall fit and finish of this model. Now, obviously in some of the earlier reviews, people have criticized that, but it seems like VinFast has made some changes to the build quality of this car in a very short amount of time, so it's nice to see. Now, if you guys are looking to adjust a couple of things here, this is where VinFast took a little bit of a, a page from Tesla's book. So if you wanna adjust the mirrors, they are located in the screen. So there's no actual button here, but if you touch the mirror control, now you can adjust the mirror uh, from the actual button over here. And then you can also change which mirror you want by going into the screen. Same thing for the steering column. So push the steering wheel button there. That'll actually allow you to power, tilt, and telescope the steering column, which is again included when you guys go for the plus trim. If you go for the eco trim, it'll just have a manual adjustment down here with a traditional lever. That takes relatively easy or uh, quickly, or that doesn't take long to get used to. And then once you Set the, set the steering wheel and mirror controls. You can kind of save it in the actual profiles here, uh, which again, as an owner, you won't have to touch it again. You can also see there are a lot of controls here that are controlled via this 15.6 inch touchscreen. This is actually an in-house design software from Vinhouse. Uh, apparently they worked with Intel to kind of work with the software. It includes over the air updates. You can see it's asking me if I want to save that new steering wheel position. Uh, and it also has wireless upper car, our Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So I can see my phone is connected. There's the CarPlay. It takes up this right portion of the screen. This section here stays put because it shows you all your information with the car. It shows you your tire pressure. It shows you who has their seat belt buckled. You can also adjust the headlight controls. These are, are in the screen as well, uh, which a lot of manufacturers are going to that. You can see there's the auto function and then you can also open and close the shades see above me here you can open and close that and you can also vent it open you can actually open up the sunroof which is nice some competitors don't allow you to do that your drive mode selector is here you can see this car offers three modes eco sport or normal and sport um, and then there's also a function where you can turn the creep on and off the regen braking the regen braking in this car it is nice that it's there. It's not a full one pedal drive like in some competitors. So keep that in mind if you guys are looking for that. But you can see here, I love the way the CarPlay looks. The new software is definitely improved. At least that's what VinFast tells me. I never got a chance to spend time in the first early edition cars, but it's relatively quick and snappy. My phone connects to it very quickly and I don't really have too many complaints there. Uh, going back to the VinFast unit here, you can see it does include embedded GPS, although it technically goes back to Google uh, because this is uh, this does have Alexa built into the actual system, so you can actually use Alexa to control voice commands and whatnot. Your climate controls are here. This car has dual zone automatic climate control with an air filtration system, and it also has heated and ventilated second, first and second row seats. So this kind of feature is kind of rare. You can't even get ventilated seats in like a Ford Mustang Mach-E or a Tesla Model Y. 
Nice to see it here. And it's also in the second row. However, if you want to adjust or turn those on and off, you have to go into the screen. VinFast does not have an actual hard button for the seat controls. But once you kind of get used to this car, it's relatively easy to use. There's also a heated steering wheel function, which is nice. So a lot of great features that you just don't expect to find in this class of vehicle. Now push that little camera icon, you can see there's a full 360 camera, which gives you a top-down view. The resolution and quality is pretty much average. It's nothing super special. There's even a trailer view here for those of you who plan to tow. But overall, it's just nice to see VinFast is kind of including that. You can see there's even a 360 perimeter scan. Um, down over here, you can see this is how you quickly access the heated and cooled seat function. You can also tap that. It'll go to all your, your cards where you can go to all your different apps and whatnot. If you want to adjust uh, the driver aids, you can see there's where you can go into the driver aids and adjust that. VinFast gives you the ability to kind of turn them on and off like so many other brands. You can also turn off a chime, which the chime is what people were complaining about in the early videos of this car and early reviews. Now they give you the ability to turn the chime on and off where you can just have a steering wheel vibration. Love that because now it doesn't beep incessively at you and it's not super intrusive. So VinFast did make some changes to that, which again is all software. Um, I actually had a chance to use it out on the highway and it works pretty well. Uh, and, but overall, you can see if you want to go into your EV function here, this is where it's going to show you your battery charging information, your display. You can also go to a percentage or you can go to a mileage display. Um, the range of this car has been surprisingly good. I've been averaging, or it's been showing around 250 miles of actual real world range in my actual testing for this car. And then of course down here you can see traditional air vents which aren't controlled via like something in the screen. You have a wireless phone charging pad here. And then down here you can see you have your um, push button transmission selector. So it's pretty straightforward. There's reverse, neutral, drive, and then P for park. Your door lock control switch is over here. VinFast actually gives you a volume knob. Your hazard switch is over here. And then over here you can see it's nicely leather stitched. Open this up, you can see it also reveals a pretty decent amount of storage. It could be a little bit deeper, but this is nice and padded. Uh, the seats, uh, they are pretty comfortable and supportive, but I wish the leather, the vegan leather was a little bit softer. There's also a glove box that you can see is damped and lined with felt. It's a bin style. It offers a pretty good amount of storage. There's an auto dimming rear view mirror, but VinFast doesn't offer a digital camera mir uh, mirror. There's also some LED lighting in here. Uh, and there's also some ambient lighting underneath the dash. Uh, you can actually go into the settings here and change the color of the ambient lighting into different themes and different mood lighting as well. Uh, and you can also kind of do an ambient light effect. It's all actually very nice. This is nicer ambient lighting than I've seen in some expensive luxury cars. So it's kind of great to see VinFast is doing, uh, you know, that little detailed touch. But overall, the interior makes a great first impression. Love the big 15.6 inch screen. The software behind it works pretty well. It's got pretty good visibility. It's got decent quality materials and also good fit and finish. I didn't hear a squeak and rattle in this car. So overall, if you guys are thinking this interior would be well below par, you'll be pleasantly surprised with these newer versions of the VF8. Now moving to the back seat, you can see this model is only a two row SUV, which means VinFast was able to give you some actual space in the second row. Now, sadly, I don't have actual legroom figures back here just yet, but as you can see, I'd probably estimate it to be just under 40 inches of legroom, which is a pretty good amount. These seats obviously do fold down to expand the cargo capacity, which is nice. It creates almost a flat floor, but then you can also uh, slightly recline the seat by pulling that same lever. You can actually recline it back if you'd like, which is nice. And then back here, you can see it still has the same soft touch door panel materials as the front, same aluminum trim, padded area over here. There's also an 11 speaker premium sound system, which sounds decent. And overall, it's definitely a nice choice if you guys uh, go for the plus trim. But getting inside, you can see this roof line definitely ducked a little bit lower than I thought when I had to get into this car. So, but once you get in and shut the door, there's a little bit of creakiness from this door handle here, which isn't in the front door. So again, I'll have to uh, make a note of that. But overall, you can see the legroom back here is pretty decent. Uh, you can see for somebody my height, this is my driving position. I have a good amount of foot space, good legroom. And then in terms of headroom, it's also okay. I mean, if you're over six feet, this panoramic sunroof is going to definitely uh, eat into the space a little bit. Uh, but what surprises me here is this hump right here. This car, uh, this platform I'm assuming is probably not built off of a dedicated EV architecture. So that's why you have this center drive shaft tunnel for uh, a gas engine or a drive shaft, which is not necessary for electric vehicles. But uh, if you guys don't plan to use the middle seat, uh, you'll see there's rear seat air vents. There's three USB charging ports here. There's two storage cubbies. And then you also saw there's an armrest that folds down and it also gives you cup holders in the actual armrest itself. No additional storage. Uh, and then if you want to, again, fold down the seat, there's a lever here. You kind of fold it down or you can recline it. And it actually reclines a fairly good amount. So if you guys plan to use this as a family SUV, I'd say the legroom is pretty much on par with a Model Y or a Mustang Mach-E. So it should do nicely, especially if you guys also need to put some car seats back here.
So here we are finally behind the wheel of the VinFast VF8. Now, I wasn't at the media drive for the very early uh, City Edition cars uh, that happened earlier this year. That model, remember, had a different battery pack. Now, VinFast has replaced the battery pack with one from CATL as opposed to Samsung. It's a little bit bigger. Range has improved to 243 miles on this model that we're driving because we're driving the Plus trim, which means we have 402 horsepower, 457 pound-feet of torque. VinFast says it's good for zero to 60 times in the mid five second range, which I suspect is slightly conservative. Um, we are starting off, or at least when VinFast gave me the car, it had around 92% charge. It showed around 245 miles of range on a full charge. I put about 66 miles on it, just trying to get to my destination. I'm here just outside of LA over in Irvine, California. But let's go ahead and test out what we can get zero to 60 wise. Now to do that, it's pretty simple. There's no launch control. I'm gonna put it into sport mode, which really wakens or wakes things up. It really makes the car feel so so much faster when it's in sport mode. And let's go ahead and see what we can get on this nice stretch of straight road that I found. And what we'll do is we'll just, we'll brake torque it first. There's a definite lag off the line, but keep your foot planted in it and you get to 60 in 4.68 seconds. Okay, that is slightly downhill, but that's very impressive. I was not expecting 4.68 seconds. That time makes it a little bit faster than the last Mustang Mach-E dual motor extended range battery pack that I drove, which did it in 4.9 seconds. I suspected this car would probably be faster, but that is an excellent time, actually. I'm really surprised at that number. Let's try it here one more time again. This time, I'm not gonna brake torque it. I'm just gonna floor it. man once it gets going whew, okay there we go 4.7 seconds there and that's with it on a level surface so you guys saw it here the new battery pack and the performance that this car gives you is mighty impressive you just kind of have to get past the initial startup at the uh i guess the throttle uh, pedal kind of gives you initially and I suspect VinFast did that to kind of make this car feel a little bit more approachable a little bit more natural especially if you're not used to driving an EV EVs tend to be a little bit jumpy off the line but they've definitely tuned it to feel more um, like a conventional car and I'm I have to say I'm impressed 4.7 is an excellent time it basically puts it in the same ballpark as the Mustang Mach-E with the dual motor all-wheel drive a Hyundai Ioniq 5 with the dual motors a Tesla Model Y dual motor as well so for a car that's, or for a car company that's a startup, it is a great start here. Um, so my first impression there is pretty good. Now, driving around the VF8 on this curvy road here, I'm, I'm close to like Irvine Lake. I had a chance to drive this car on the highway as well. The VF8 is definitely a heavy vehicle and a lot of EVs tend to feel heavy. I mean, this car, however, it weighs in, or at least the old Samsung equipped battery pack model weighed in at around 5,700 pounds. I don't have the curb weight figure of this model with a slightly larger CATL battery pack, but you can feel the weight. I mean, EVs feel heavy. In terms of the handling dynamics, the suspension of this car is very softly sprung. Now, uh, I remember reading reviews on the early cars and people were complaining about the ride quality and they said the dampers were horrible. I have to say, spending a good like two hours in the car with this model, mixed driving it from LA traffic on the 405 to this curvier road, I have to say that VinFast has done some good tweaks here to the ride quality. I actually think this car rides uh, on the softer side. The shocks definitely don't have quite as much rebound control as what I've tested in some other EVs, but it's not horrible. Like some people were very much commenting how the car just kind of wallowed around in terms of the ride quality and it made you sick. I drove this car for two hours. I never felt sick driving it. It definitely, with the 20 inch wheels, you definitely feel when you hit a bump, the car kind of rocks a little bit back and forth and you have to get used to the fact that it rocks a little bit more than you want. And then I, there are also times where I hit a really nasty bump and it, you could feel a slight crash in the suspension. But honestly, you hear that in a lot of other cars as well. So you can really tell that VinFast is working or they're taking the feedback in and they made some very good changes. What I don't like about the car's driving, however, is the steering. It's just pretty dead. The steering is dead, it's devoid of feel, but that's kind of the case with a lot of EVs, but just driving it normally. I mean, I'm, try, you know, I'm coming to a perspective here from a driving enthusiast, but if you're just a normal person looking for a daily driver, the VF8 drives really well. It drives it feels solid. There's not a squeak or a rattle in this interior, which really shocked me considering how new this car company is. Uh, the visibility in here is also decent. I can see out of the front, the side, the rear pretty well. I wish that VinFast would offer a digital camera re review mirror. They don't do that, uh, at least for now they don't. But 
overall visibility is good. And then in terms of the driver assistance tech, that's also something I wanna mention because people were complaining about the driver assistance nannies in this car. And I have to say, VinFast did say that they made some tweaks to the software. So some of the lane keep stuff is less intrusive, um, which is definitely a good thing. I, I, I noticed, however, that you can kind of turn off the warning. So there's a setting in here on the screen where you can turn off the actual beeping or turn the system off completely. I like to leave the system on, but what I did is I turned off the actual just alerts, audio alerts. And instead the car just kind of vibrates the wheel and it does a really good job. It keeps me centered in the lane very nicely. The adaptive cruise control, I also had a chance to work, use it on the 405 and it worked pretty well. The one thing I noticed is if you cross over the lane, there's always like a little warning here that says assisting with emergency steering. I don't really think that's necessary that it shows a little warning there in the instrument panel. But again, that's just something that VinFast is doing for now. That's clearly a software tweak that, tweak that they can easily you know, change if they need to. But overall, uh, I'm impressed. The seats are comfortable for the most part. I do wish they were slightly more padded, but the ventilated seat function works extremely well. Um, it's nice that VinFast includes it even in the second row if you're looking for ventilated seats. And, and overall, I'm just pleasantly surprised. For a car company that is so new, um, and considering the fact that you know their first efforts supposedly didn't weren't as good, they've made so many tweaks to this model that it pretty much drives almost as good as any other EV that's in this particular price range. Now, in terms of the range, um, I started out this review at 92% uh, charge. It was showing 245 miles. It's showing 157 or 156 miles of range left. I've driven 70 miles. So on a full charge, I suspect this car could probably do um, you know over 250 miles, which obviously that's not the magic 300 number that you know a lot of people are looking for uh, in this space but keep in mind the eco version can do around 263 miles so i suspect that'll get closer to 300 vinfast again can obviously make changes to improve the range like every other manufacturer this vehicle also will accept a maximum of 150 kilowatts on a dc fast charger which is average it'll take about 30 minutes on a level three uh, if you guys want to dc fast charge this vehicle so road trips are very possible but overall, I'm just pleasantly surprised. For those of you who are skeptical about a new car company like this, I mean, keep in mind, there are also a lot of new EV car companies like Lucid, for example, like Rivian. Um, so you kind of have to keep an open mind. EVs kind of open up, you know, your open up the book to so many different manufacturers and uh, a lot of these new upstart brands can easily challenge the legacy brands because EVs just are less complex. They have less moving parts versus an internal combustion vehicle. But for those of you who are skeptical and you live in California for now, I have to say, I am pleasantly shocked and surprised with the way the VF8 drives. Is it perfect? No, but no car is perfect. But is it worth a look considering the price point for this vehicle? Absolutely. And I'm really looking forward to Vinfast rolling out their next models and then eventually expanding their presence outside of other states versus California. So I have to say, in my line of work, I get to drive so many different brands. We're talking hundreds of different brands from legacy auto manufacturers to startup companies. So it's always interesting to me whenever I get a chance to drive a car from a startup company, because as you guys know, VinFast is very, very new here in America. They literally just came to our shores early this year. And if you guys remember the early reviews of the car, they were not good. A lot of people criticized the ride and handling, the tech in the car, the driver assistance stuff. And VinFast essentially listened to all of that criticism. And this is essentially the model that I'm driving today. It's a car that VinFast made a lot of changes to in terms of software and hardware to address a lot of the complaints. And after spending the day driving the 2024 VinFast VF8 with the new CATL battery pack, I have to say, this car, I came into it with basically no expectations because I never drove the early models. It impressed me because it does feel like a vehicle that's going to appeal to a lot of Americans. It's pretty much the right size. It offers just enough space in terms of the front, the back seat, and the cargo area, although the cargo area could be a little bit bigger. In terms of performance, this model here, the Plus with 402 horsepower, sprints to 60 in 4.7 seconds. 4.7 seconds is almost a second faster versus what VinFast, is, or VinFast claims, and that performance puts it basically in line with competitors like the Model Y, the Mustang Mach-E, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and the Kia e V6. The tech in the car also is an in-house design by VinFast and it also works fairly well. I love the fact that it includes over-the-air updates, wireless Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. 
and the car is also very comfortable. I drove this car for a solid two hours. The front seats were a little bit too firm for me, but I wasn't left uncomfortable after the longer drive. So again, I always tell people, try the seats out for yourselves, make sure you like them. But again, if you're willing to try a new brand like this and you're interested in driving something that's not a Tesla or a Mach-E or an Ionic 5 or whatever, the VinFast VF8 should be at the top of your list. Now, if you guys don't live in California, unfortunately, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer because right now, the VF8 is only available in California. VinFast is hoping to roll the vehicle out into other states starting next year. They're, I believe they said they were gonna try to expand out to Texas, Florida, and next. But uh, later in 2024, we're also gonna see them introduce the VF9 for those of you who want a three row electric SUV that's even more luxurious, that has more range, that'll offer up to 330 miles of range. That should start at around $80,000. Now, if you guys wanna get your hands on this model here, they are available, of course, in California only. And the base version, which is the Eco model, comes with dual motor all wheel drive, 350 horsepower, 263 miles of range. That model starts at around $46,000. That's before a $1,200 destination charge. Really, your only option is the exterior color and the interior color choices. Now, if you guys want the plus trim, that's around $6,000 extra. The plus includes a lot of niceties like the 20-inch wheels, the panoramic sunroof, the heated and cooled front seats, the 12-way power sunfront seats with memory function. It's kind of worth the extra charge. It does lower the range to 243 miles, but you also get more horsepower, which improves the performance. This model here with the $990 color charge and the $1,200 destination charge comes in at just under $53,000, which $53,000 again, sounds like a good chunk of money, but if you guys remember pricing on something like a Ford Mustang Mach-E, which I tested one a couple, like probably a month ago, that model was around $60,000. And if you load up a Tesla Model Y with their uh, enhanced autopilot function, and of course you change the wheels out to the 20s and add a different interior color, that's also around $59,000. Keep in mind, this car, uh, VinFast is offering some pretty strong lease deals that are starting at around $399 a month for the Eco, $499 a month for this model here, that's with around 4,600 down, 10,000 miles a year. And you also have the fact that this car here also comes with a 10 year, 125,000 mile comprehensive warranty. That's basically from bumper to bumper. That warranty is about three times longer versus every other car manufacturer. So there are some benefits by choosing a new startup company. And I have to say this model here with all the changes that VinFast Vin has made in a very short amount of time is definitely now worth a look if you guys are shopping for a midsize all electric SUV. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 VinFast VF8. If you're also looking to see the latest cars, I'm Testing. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.